Spectroscopy is the study of how atoms and molecules absorb or emit light. Quantum mechanics teaches us that atoms and molecules can only emit very specific colors or wavelengths of light. In fact, you can actually use the color of light that matter emits to determine exactly what atoms are present in that sample. In today's experiment, you can make use of this amazing fact for yourself to determine which chemical elements are present in a sample of gas. To do this, we'll look for the unique set of photons that each sample emits using a diffraction grating. A diffraction grating bends a light beam, much like a prism, but by different amounts for different colors. Photons of different wavelengths are bent by different amounts as they pass through the grating. Red is bent more than purple. And this allows us to identify exactly which colors were present in the original light beam because each would be found at a specific diffraction angle. So if we can induce a chemical sample of atoms to emit light, we can use a diffraction grating to look for which specific wavelengths of photons are actually emitted. The exact angle that a specific photon is diffracted is related to the wavelength of that photon by this formula, where the sine of the diffraction angle is equal to the photon wavelength divided by the d value for the diffraction grating. More on that later. This set of emitted photons, also called a line spectrum, acts like a unique signature or barcode for every unique atom in the sample and allows us to determine exactly which elements are present. To make atoms emit light, we'll be using what's called a discharge tube. This is a glass tube containing only atoms of a particular element in the gas phase. When the tube is connected to a power source, the voltage we apply increases the energy of the atoms inside and causes them to emit light or glow. And by the way, this is exactly how so-called neon lights work. We'll analyze the light being emitted from our discharge tubes with a spectroscope. In your spectroscope, the light from a chosen discharge tube first passes through a collimator to make sure all of your photons are headed in the same direction, and then to a diffraction grating, which will cause the light to bend according to color. In order to measure that diffraction angle accurately, you'll be looking for the diffracted photons through a narrow telescope mounted to a rotating base. That base has lines etched into the side to allow us to measure exactly how much we've rotated the base, which corresponds exactly to the angle of diffraction of our emitted photons. Scanning through all possible angles allows us to observe all photon wavelengths being emitted. And this set of wavelengths is very unique to each element. By consulting a reference table in the lab, we can work out exactly which elements are in our discharge tubes. To operate your spectroscope, you'll need to make sure it's properly aligned and calibrated. So first align the telescope with the collimator so that you're looking directly through the diffraction grating. Next, center the light source on the slit to maximize the amount of light that you can see, but don't adjust the slit itself. Instead, you can slide the entire spectroscope from side to side slightly if necessary. It's important to make sure that the crosshair you see when looking through the telescope is exactly centered on the slit of light and that the angle measurements on the scope read zero degrees on the right side and 180 degrees on the left. The angle can be read by looking for the point where the zero on the top scale crosses the bottom scale. Here you can see that the reading is about 5.2 degrees, so we'll adjust to zero. All right, now that the instrument is aligned, we'll need to make sure it's calibrated properly. That's because the amount of diffraction not only depends on the wavelength of light, but also the diffraction grading itself. So in order to make sure your results would be consistent from instrument to instrument, we first measure what's known as the D value of our specific diffraction grading that I mentioned earlier. At this point, I should warn you to only use the instruments of one color today. This is because the red spectroscopes have a very different diffraction grading than the blue ones, so your calibration will only work for one set. To calibrate, we'll use an atom with a very well-known emission wavelength, sodium. We know that sodium will emit photons at exactly 589 nanometers, which if you're keeping track is in the orange region of the light spectrum. It's actually sodium that is responsible for the orangish glow of streetlights, since most of these are made with sodium lamps. So if we use sodium as a first test case, we know that whatever angle of diffraction we observe for the orange photons must correspond to a wavelength of exactly 589 nanometers. You just measure the diffraction angle, and since you know that lambda has to equal 589 nanometers for this case, you can use this equation to figure out what your D value is, and you're ready to proceed. Now we can use that value to convert all of our future angle measurements 
into the other photon wavelengths. So let's get started. We'll start with hydrogen, the simplest of all the elements. You'll notice that it glows a lavender color, but when placed in the spectroscope instrument, you'll discover that this lavender color is mostly a combination of a red, turquoise, and violet spectral line. By rotating the spectroscope base in both directions, measure the diffraction angle for each of these three lines and determine what specific wavelength each of them correspond to. Now we know from class that these spectral lines observed for the hydrogen atom correspond to electronic transitions that obey the Rydberg equation, where R is the Rydberg constant and N corresponds to a particular energy state. You can actually validate the Rydberg equation here by comparing your observed results with the theoretical wavelengths that you'd predict for each spectral line using the Rydberg equation. Next, try the mercury discharge tube, and you'll again notice three spectral lines. In exactly the same manner as before, calculate and report the wavelengths observed for each of the three lines. All right, now that you've got the hang of atomic emission spectroscopy, let's put your skills to the test. Can you properly identify the unknown element in a discharge tube? Take a look at at least two of the unlabeled discharge tubes in the lab and scan carefully in each of the clockwise and counterclockwise directions. Keep track of the colors of any spectral lines you observe. No need to convert these to wavelengths, as you should be able to figure out what you've got with just the color patterns alone. After writing down the colors of all your observed spectral lines, compare your results to the reference sheet available in the lab to identify which elements were in your unlabeled discharge tubes. Interestingly, this is actually a very common technique for identifying the elemental composition of unknown compounds. By breaking molecules down into their atoms and heating the system up, we can look for spectral lines of specific elements and determine the atomic composition of chemical samples. So the math for this lab basically involves three types of calculations. The first thing you'll need to know is how to get a proper reading from your spectroscope. The dial on the right-hand side of the instrument begins at zero degrees and increases in the counterclockwise direction. So if you rotate the base in the counterclockwise direction, you can simply read the angle directly from the gauge. However, if you rotate it in the opposite direction, say 5 degrees, then the gauge will be reading 5 degrees past zero in the opposite direction, which will actually be 355 degrees, since zero is actually the same as 360 degrees of a full turn. So when going in this direction, be sure to subtract your reading from 360 to get the true angle of diffraction. Once you measure the diffraction angles in both the clockwise and counterclockwise directions, simply average them to arrive at your final measurement. Next, convert all of your measured diffraction angles to photon wavelengths. You'll use the D value you previously determined along with this relationship. Double check that the wavelengths you calculate correspond to the colors you observed by using the table available in your lab manual. Finally, you'll use the Rydberg equation to double check your measurements for the hydrogen atom spectral lines. The value of the Rydberg constant is given, and so are the combinations of atomic energy states that correspond to the spectral lines you observed. You just need to solve for the one over lambda part and then invert it by dividing one by the number you get. That should do it for this lab. Enjoy your foray into atomic emission spectroscopy, and don't forget to be safe.